Good morning, everyone. Let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. I'm going to point out some interesting things that I'm seeing today, so you're going to want to stay tuned. I've also got some good trade ideas that I want to point out that are really actionable, I think, right at this moment in time. So try to get this video out relatively quickly. Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you find some value in the content. And as I'm going along, if you're interested in learning more about technical analysis, check out my stock market technical analysis course. Link in the description below. Check that out, it's a good course, should really help out. All right, triple Qs. As far as I can tell, we might be heading for another leg lower. Uh, we did, if I go to the hourly chart here on triple Qs, we did run right into that resistance level right there at about 401, uh, you know, 490. And so far, that's really been the high and the sellers have been stepping in. Today, they gapped it up, but you can see sellers coming in pretty strong uh, today. So it looks like we're going lower as far as I can tell. So where do we head to? Well, I, I honestly, I think we're going down to this 373 area right down here. This is the area I think the market's going to trade down to and probably hold down there for a while. Probably not break that, but maybe we'll chop around there for a little while. And then if we see a break of that bigger, bigger stuff's going on and likely the, we're going to start to hear from the Fed and, and all kinds of stuff. But I think we've got to, uh, you know, to me, it looks like we've just kind of made a head and shoulders. And as I look to the downside, there's about a 5% drop on triple Qs. Uh, on the weekly chart here, again, we're just using this big reversal candle that, that we got right here. This was the reversal candle stick, uh, big bearish engulfing candle with confirmation on the weekly chart. And you can see this week, they popped it up, made it look pretty good. But so far, you know, today we're starting to sell down. So we'll watch this uh, again. You know, I, I don't think we really should be going over that 401 area. So I talked about that pretty heavily in yesterday's video. Uh, that would be really the area I'd look to stop out of any kind of short trade. Uh, I did short the market up there at 401, took a shot at it, uh, figured, you know, we were at resistance going back to the hourly chart here. You know, this was the objective area to short. So, so far it's working and I think we're heading lower. Trade idea I want to point out though, NVDA, NVIDIA. All right, so we're going to look here at the daily chart and you can see here's your uptrend line right there on the daily chart. Clear negative divergence. See how the momentum's just dropping off. Okay, uh, NVDA, sorry, I had to take a quick break. So on the daily chart, big negative divergence right here, RSI and the PPO, both of them show that momentum has been downtrending for a little while now. And we've continued to kind of drift higher, made a new divergent high right here, I have it circled, uh, and then drifted higher. We had a false breakdown right there, little whipsaw candle, uh, stick save, where it basically started to break, but then they recovered it. But I talked about this and I mentioned that if we get another break of the trend line, it's probably the real deal. We're, we saw that yesterday right there, just started to break that trend. Not super impulsive yet, you know, we just barely closed underneath there. But today, and today they tried to recover it, but they're, they're, looks like it's starting to sell off and become impulsive. So I am short this one as well. And it does look like it's about to, you know, continue to sell off and really start a downtrend in this stock. So lots of potential here. I've talked about some levels to watch. First level of support is really about 288.03. Looks like, you know, we could have a level. This level I'm not super confident on. It's about 268, but it is uh, there is a gap right there and you can see this breakout candle or this big impulsive candle. So we might find some some sort of reaction down there at 268.30. And then I think but I do think like the target for this is probably going to be all the way down here at you know 215 or so somewhere right in here on that trend line and that's really the longer term bull trend line uh, going all the way back to 2019 basically is when this thing pretty much went parabolic so a uh, move back down to there i think would be uh probable okay mgm talked about this one a couple days ago uh, and how it looked like a good short right into resistance so basically what i saw there was zooming out you have a trend line here on the daily chart on mgm and I've got all the tags of support circled right there. And we had negative divergence. There it is right there. Again, divergence isn't the sell signal, but it is an indication that you've got the conditions right for, for a trade, right? So negative divergence, meaning the, that the uh, momentum's moving lower and price is still moving higher, is, is 
sets the conditions for a short trade. Okay, so then you look for a break of trend. We did get the break of trend right there. It did sell down, pretty good confirmation. And then it ran up and did a back test. And this is where I talked about the trade it, on this back test. So we back tested for two days. I've kind of got that circled out, but you can see here, back test here, back test here, and that, and then we're starting to drift lower now. And so I think the selling, as the sellers realize that was resistance and that there's, you know, we're more downside to come, the selling should get more impulsive and and bigger. So basically, uh, this trade is working so far. I think it'll continue to work. The target for this, I really believe, is all the way down here at about 34 bucks. <clears throat> and that just goes off of this bear flag. If you mark out the flag pole like this, and then you mark out the flag, which, you know, to sometimes I'll drop down to the hourly to really <clears throat> define my flag. But the flag kind of looked like something like that right there. <clears throat> and then, you know, top of the flag was up here. And then what you do is you just take your flagpole <clears throat> and just bring it down to the high of the flag area and then just do something like that. And, you know, so it's projecting right now somewhere between 30, 32 and 34. Uh, 32, we've got, you know, clear, we've got some resistance right there. But 34 was the former, the former high before the big COVID drop. So I think that's a good level to really target. And uh, again, you'd want to step in a little bit early if you're going to short this thing and cover a little bit of, above that just to make sure that, you know, a lot of people that are shorting it will be looking to cover just slightly above that support level. Okay, moving on. Net <clears throat> talked about how this trade was looking like there was going to be continuation to the downside. And so far today, it looks like we're starting to make that move to the downside. Projected target on this is really about 110 uh, it's about 110.75, and that's going to be your former level that was key resistance here, and then it was support right there. So I think that that's there's likely going to be a reaction there. So that's my target. Again, the projected target comes from this flag action here. You've got this, you've got this. Uh, it really the, you have a bear flag, basically flag pull. You flagged out, and then the continuation move down there. So that one looks good. This one also just clearly came with negative divergence. Um, right there and right there. So again, it's not just using one thing. I don't just use like, oh, we're, we just crossed the moving averages. You know, it's kind of a, a mixture of uh, momentum indicators indicating, you know, put, that the setup is there and the future direction is probable and then using trend lines and breaks of trend lines and then candlestick analysis. You know, being able to read what these candles are telling you about how the market felt about that stock at a, at a key levels. Uh, so it's kind of a combination of trend analysis, candlestick analysis, momentum analysis, all combined into one. Again, I teach all these concepts in my course along with risk reward analysis. Uh, that's important too and, and kind of money management. Okay, silver. I want to talk about SLV. This is a silver ETF. Silver is right now looks like it's that key support. So this is your daily chart and basically we've got this level at about 2048. You can see that this is kind of your breakout level. And then we've had several tags of that right here where we have hit support. Now we undercut it once here and recovered. And then as I zoom in, you can see that's kind of what's going on now. That yesterday they were dumping it below that, but today we're up and, and holding that level. So silver's up about almost 1%. Uh, but the thing that I really uh, you know, am reading on this is kind of the, the, flush, the move below it. Uh, running some stops and then the recovery. So look for this to be impulsive. You know, you do want to see the buyer step in here as they recognize that this was a quick flush out move. And, and then the short sellers, the people that got short on this move, uh, look for them to start covering. So we don't see that quite yet. Um, so again, I'm just kind of watching that. But it is that key support. And this support does come with bullish divergence. So you'll see here on the RSI and the PPO, there's your PPO. And the RSI looks something like this. There's your bullish divergence, basically. So this was basically, an, uh, we were drifting lower right here. Prices were making lower lows, and yet momentum started to move higher right there. So that's your bullish divergence. So to me, it looks like we run up. And we also had a downtrend line too that you could watch on SLV. 
We run up, we break it, we back test, run in for another back test. This is the area of support. So it looks like the area we should hold at and start to bounce off of. Um, I think it's objective to go long on silver right here with all the technicals that we have uh, with the stop somewhat, somewhat below. I'd probably even want to give it some room all the way down to this trend line down to about 1987. Below that, we start to break below that daily closes below that trend line you're going to want to look for to start to stop out most likely but as of right now at support pretty objective area to uh, go long in my opinion at least and i just want to cover newmont mining because i'm seeing relative strength here in this one this being the largest miner and the miner that's in the s p could be one of the mining stocks gold mining stocks that a lot of funds hedge funds pension funds uh, can buy or, or try to buy, you know, it's relatively one of the safer, uh, you know, safer stocks because it's uh, such a large miner. So you're not going to get as much volatility as like a junior miner, but still continues to look like we are bull flagging. So you've got the flag, you know, the flag here, and then we're kind of marking out this, this flagging action. And then you'd look for, you know, you'd look for a continuation uh, like that. So that would put us up to, you know, try to find a key level up here. You know, possibly this uh, 60.23 could be a projected level. We can kind of mark that out, see if we get anything out of that one. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a level right there. About It's about 59.75 or so. But that's what right now what this looks like it's projecting at. Now, Newmont also comes on the daily chart with big bullish divergence. This is a big bullish divergence too. See this momentum? See how it's drifting higher? And it's been moving higher for quite some time on the PPO and the RSI. So big bullish divergence, meaning each one of these new lows has made a higher low in the momentum. So this is this divergence, being that it's pretty big too, is indicating, I think, as far as I can tell, the next leg higher, not just a little swing trade but potentially a trend trade and the next like higher in this minor which would put us over the all-time highs of 75 46 or at least the near time high near term highs i don't know if those are the all-time uh yeah so still like it and it's just interesting that we're seeing this relative strength going to the hourly chart here you can see today they started to sell it down early in the morning but the buyers are right there stepping back in so it's just continuing this flag all right, we're just, we've got this flagging action where we got the flagpole, we're kind of consolidating, and this is projecting that we're gonna break out to the upside. Okay, so I like that, and if I like the new mop mining, then I'm gonna like probably these other miners as well. Even though some of them are down today, the relative strength in the largest miner, new mop, uh, as well as, you know, gold, if I go to gold bullion, you can I continue to see it just holding strength. You know, it's just, just kind of holding in this area. We're not moving up, we're not moving down. So, um, you know, it's a, it seems to be approving as support. So until we see a change of this, I would say we just go with the continuation of the uptrend starting back in 20, if I can get my chart to work. Start, you know, it really starts back in uh, 2018 and you got this uptrend and, you know, I would just say we're gonna continue that uptrend and make the next leg higher. Nothing's changed. So I've been talking about that for a few weeks now because nothing's technically changed, but it does look like one of the best long setups uh, that I could find. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, and I wanna take a look at lumber, the lumber futures. And the I wanna make kind of, a, I wanna take a step back and <clears throat> kind of make a point that um, for kind of a macro theme that I've really developed on the markets. So it seems to me as if the inflation trade is going to be here to last, probably for the next 10 years or so, we're likely going to have inflationary pressures and it's not going to be just all up at once. It's going to, you know, there's going to be moves down. I think really, you know, this market is, you know, trades off the Fed, basically. It's not off the, the virus or anything else for the most part. It's off of Fed rates and stimulus. And it's been like that ultimately for, Many many years, uh, you you know you know the the S and P five hundred has moved you know back in twenty eighteen of December when the Fed was hiking rates, so it's all about Fed stimulus, and the thing is is that the Fed now is running into inflationary pressures. So what I think is likely going to play out is the Fed can't raise rates 
unless they're willing to sacrifice the economy and the and the market and they they've spent the last 10 years really building that building up markets trying to keep them propped up to create this wealth effect so to let that completely go i just don't think they're willing to do that ultimately what i think is going to happen is as inflation starts to peak they're going to they're going to start to try to talk inflation down and scare the inflation trade and so then maybe you'll see little pullbacks along the way, but then inflation will continue to start to rise. And that's what we're seeing here in lumber. So lumber, you know, here's your COVID lows. And then lumber had this meteoric rise pretty much from the lows to the highs, about five, 600 percent in the lumber futures. And it was really one of the poster childs of the initial inflation trade was the fact that the lumber has, was just out of control. So then we saw the, the Fed start to talk about how it was going to, you know, how it thinks the inflation's transitory and it's not going to last and lumber futures pretty much crashed you know back down to this 460 area so that's a good size move from the up top side to the bottom about 73 percent so and that's how lumber moves lumber moves parabolic basically up and down but it just came down to the former support level right there all right you can see i've got it circled out that was kind of former resistance resistance and then it was support and that's the theme that I have is we're now we're now we've now shifted to a higher level of prices and lumber basically came to support it held and it came down right to that support level held we had bullish divergence down here you can see there's your bullish divergence building and we had a bullish falling wedge and basically broke out and we're starting now we're, we're now basically getting really close to what those former highs were so that inflation trade is persisting you know you i think that's going to continue and that's one of the reasons why i think gold is due for another leg higher very similar to what lumber looks like here um, one thing that's kind of interesting is you know i needed to build a new deck on my house and i didn't want to buy the lumber and you know i wanted to build it when we were way up here but the deck was going to cost me about 25 grand or so to get that thing built which was just obscene you know in terms of my conception of what prices should be so i waited and i watched the futures and this is one where area where trading and, and watching charts and technical analysis can help you in, in just real life as well um and i waited for the lumber futures to pretty much crash and then once they had the breakout right here from this downward this this uh bullish falling wedge i went and bought all my lumber for uh for my deck and 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 you know started building that deck and uh, so far that's been the low and that's been the good move uh, lumber futures from that point from that area are up you know they're up 100 they've almost doubled you know they've more than doubled so again the point is is that lumber is just showing signs of that persistent inflation trade and inflation doesn't when it when it pops up it you know prices rise and then everybody's goes to their employer and asks for raises and the, if the employers aren't willing to give them you know the raises that they need that they're requesting uh, then they go look for a different employer so ultimately com competition forces employers to uh, give people higher pay to match up with the higher expenses higher cost of living and then though that higher pay means they have more money more cash to go spend into the economy which means more prices rise it's that's why it's kind of a cycle that can persist. Inflation doesn't just die when it starts, it can persist because you have employment uh, raises and then prices rise and then employment raises and then prices rise. Uh, and so that's why ultimately to stop inflation, the Fed has to really put us just a big, you know, heavy foot right on top of it with big interest rate hikes. I just don't think the Fed's really willing to do that. And the reason why we I can kind of tell that is that they're not even hiking interest rates now. They're just talking about tapering their bond purchases, which means they're just talking about less stimulus. They're still stimulus. All right, so that's one of the themes here, and I just want to point that out. And to wrap it up, I just want to look at Apple here. So Apple, again, just has not broke. We're not going to see the markets break until Apple breaks. So we've got this uptrend line here on the hourly chart. Just been kind of walking up that. Uh, and yeah, we have negative divergence. You'll see it right there. See how we're just continuing to drift lower on the momentum. And yet, you know, we're making new highs. So this was a divergent high and this is an extension or a new divergent high. They, uh, that divergence doesn't mean we're breaking yet. So we need to see a break of 
we need to see a break of this trend line right here. And it should be impulsive, big sell down. Doesn't look like we're gonna get it today. Uh, so, you know, likely the market's gonna kind of hold up. You know, I'm not looking for any kind of big move to the downside today or, you know, or this week basically to wrap out this week, unless we see selling come in to close out the week and it's really selling an apple. I mean, I think at this point you watch this chart, uh, you know, and this will, the market's gonna go when this one goes. Cause the other stocks that I'm seeing are, have already started to break, but this is such a heavily weighted stock in the sectors. It can keep the sectors kind of flatlined. So that's what I'm watching, watching triple Q's, watching Apple. And uh, obviously I pointed out some trade ideas that seem to be working so far. So we'll, we'll stay with those while they continue to work. And that's all I got, guys. So everyone uh, have a good weekend and leave me a thumbs up on your way out. Catch you on the next video.